Hey, Mark. Hey, Doug, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Great. Hey, Austin. Hey, Doug. Hey, Mark. How are you guys? Good. The only reason I say hi to Doug is so that he'll put me on the attendance. <laughs> That's the only reason <laughs> he'll ever talk to me. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can do this properly. All right, can you guys see that? Oops. Your screen? Yeah. I can see it. Okay, cool. It's interesting. I can't make the uh, window bigger once I'm sharing it. Unless I'm doing it wrong. Hmm. Interesting. Really? If you guys uh, can add your name to the list of attendees, I'd appreciate that. Hey, Doug, are we doing these calls every single Thursday or was it the first Thursday and third Thursday of each month? It's supposed to be uh, every Thursday. I think it, it was wrong on some documents someplace. Um, I think it was the TOC meeting minutes. I think I got that fixed. Yeah, I think it was That's in right. GitHub um, and it's still listed first Thursday and third Thursday. Ah, okay. I'll yeah. take a look at that. Interesting. Since we have a minute, let me take a look. Ah, you're right. Okay, I'll get that fixed. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I've been pointing people to that, um, and it might create some confusion. But yeah. I'll, I'll make sure everyone knows that it's that we do we meet every Thursday. Yeah. Let's see what, since I have a minute, let me see if I can fix that very quickly here. The, where do I get the link to the document from? You mean for the agenda? Um, yep. Okay, here, hold on a sec. Paste into the chat. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Okay, PR has been submitted. Thank you, Austin. <clears throat> All right, let's see if I can keep track of attendance here. So, Dan, you on? Yep, I'm here. All right. And Steve, are you on? I'm in. All right. Um, Edith, you there? Yes, I am. Excellent. Um, there are some new folks I don't recognize. Mr. Anichek, are you on? Yeah, I'll be on for about 15 minutes for running off. That's fine. Just, just trying to make it a little more official these days. Matt Rakowski, you on? I'm on. All right. All right, you there? I'm on mute, yeah, I'm here. Yep, okay. <laughs> All right. Ihor, welcome to the fun. Hello, folks. How's it going? <clears throat> All right, let's see. Um, one more time, the meeting agenda, pasting into the chat. If you guys can add your name to the list of attendees, I'd appreciate that. And we'll get started in just a minute. I'm going to completely butcher people's names, so I, pre I apologize in advance, but Burnt, are you there from VMware? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. And let's see. Klaus, Klaus from SAP? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Steve, I got Joanne from SAP. Are you on the call? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here I heard. Rupak from Serverless. Yeah, we're here. Excellent. Thank you. John Mitchell, SAP. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Cool. I think I got everybody else on the spreadsheet already. Come on. No. Doug, I don't think you got me. And who's that? Suha. So, uh, are you on the uh, attendee list? Please add your name to the list oh. of attendees. It'd be easier for me to keep track that way. Yeah, I'm trying to the uh, the link. I can only add a comment. Yeah, that's fine. Just add your name as a comment. Uh, let me quickly get the Google guys. Sarah? Sarah, you get there? Hi, I was muted. I'm okay. here in okay. a room. Um, Eamon and Rachel. Okay, so Eamon, you there? Yes, I'm here. And Rachel, just don't double check. Okay. Yeah, I'm here as okay. a. And William? Yep, I'm here. All right, cool. Okay, let's uh, circle back around later to catch up any latecomers or just announce yourself later uh, during the call. But let's go ahead and get started. I want to spend all the time doing roll call. Um, so let me scroll the screen here. So there's the agenda. Well, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> okay, so um, is this agenda look okay to people? Is there anything people would like to add or modify? All right, not hearing anything, moving on. Doug, um, because we have some, a lot of new people here, it might be nice just to kind of recap, you know, what the serverless working group has been up to and what we're focused on now. Sure. Okay. Um, so for those of you who are new, welcome. Um, 
we are now, we, uh, in the past, we were very much focused on producing a white paper for the CNCF, basically stating our, our view of what the current status of serverless is in the community, and in particular, have a set of recommendations for what the CNCF should do next. And one of those recommendations was to produce a specification around event format um, to try to get some consistency and interoperability around processing uh, of events, or at least uh, the format of events, so it makes it easier for people to, to code to it. So that is what our current focus is on these days, is the event specification itself. Uh, we do have a document near the top of our agenda. Where is it? It's this future work item link. Um, for additional things that we may want to look at in the future, so feel free to add additional things into that document if you wish, and we will talk about which things we want to work on as things are added to that document. In fact, I actually forgot to check it recently. Yeah, so as of right now, we actually only have the event format. We don't have anything else in there. But I know some people are uh, eager to add things to the list, so feel free to add that, and then we'll add it to an upcoming weekly call to discuss whether we want to, uh, to work on those. Is there anybody on the call who think I missed something in that summary and wants to add something? I think that was pretty good, Doug. You know, the only other thing I'd, I'd add is um, after the working, the white paper was finished, it seems like there's a lot of general interest within this working group in coming up with some common specifications for serverless concepts. Um, and, I, and we've discussed this a lot in the past, and uh, I think that that seems like there's, that's where the most interest is uh, within this group right now. And we just started with a, a common way of describing events as like the first thing to focus on, um, on that broader uh, normalization or uh, topic. So from standardizing events, you know, we've also discussed how to standardize uh, a serverless function API or a FAS API. Um, and I think we're probably going to investigate those topics soon, but uh, it depends. Yep, agreed. Uh, the only thing I would ask is that you do, if people want to suggest those, please add them to this uh, to the list here. That's where we're sort of keeping the backlog of things we want that people want to propose. Or obviously just add it to the, list, to the agenda and we, oh, on a future call as well, too. Okay, moving forward then. Um, AIs. Kathy, are you on the call? Or is someone from Huawei on the call? Okay, so I, I, I don't hear anybody. I came over the gentleman who she said may actually report status on the trademark search. I, um, so if neither one of them are on, that's going to make that a little harder to move forward. So we have uh, to defer that. I, I could give you a, a quick update. Both uh, open eventing and cloud events were fine. So it's you could use them both if you wanted to. So just pick one. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Chris, did you look up the, in the trademark database and just make sure that there's... Uh, yeah, we reached out to external counsel and, and asked. So both were um, fine. So just um, to be so clear, it, just be clear, Chris, it was open eventing and open yeah. cloud events, right? Cloud events, yeah, were the two that uh, Kathy reached out to me on. Um, uh, if you pick one, we could go forward and, and kind of do a formal registration if required, but just please amongst yourself, just pick which one and roll with it. Got it. Excellent. Thank you very much. I did a little bit of looking around, and for those who are new to this conversation, um, the this common uh, way of describing events or a common event format uh, was previously titled Open Events. In our last conversation, we were entertaining a new title um, to help make it more, more interesting, uh, and that new title was potentially Cloud Events. And we agreed to go and do a bit of market research to make sure that that name isn't uh, taken up by any um, prior IP uh, or associated strongly with anything else. I also looked around briefly, and the only thing I noticed was that when you type in cloud events, you get there's a lot of search results related to um, basically events, conferences, meetups pertaining to the subject or the category of cloud. And we will be going up against uh, that, but I don't think that's a big deal at all. All right. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, but I think uh, Austin, maybe more than that, it was. Yeah, I think it's in part to make it more or drive some more interest around around the project based on the name, but also in part because was it the GitHub repository for um, open events was already claimed. Anyway. Um, yep, that was part of it as well. 
So um, I'm just curious how you uh, like I've when I started getting involved in the in a event driven server side event driven programming space. I did tried to do a bunch of searches, and it was very interesting to read about all the conferences that are doing cloud stuff. But it was very hard to find the information about who was doing this work around server side events. And so how do you think that this could be mitigated such that, you know, like, so, so such that there could, if people would easily discover this. If they're looking for it, if they hear the term cloud event. So can I ask that we actually defer that discussion until we get to this light item in the agenda? Oh, I thought we were at that item. I'm sorry. Well, we, we kind of kind of delved into it a little bit just because I was going through the AIs from previous call, and I just wanted to see if Kathy was on to talk about it. Um, oh, okay. I mean, granted, it is, it is coming up very soon. <laughs> um, sorry. But let, let me just quickly jump over the white paper status, and then we'll get back to this, okay? Um, so just to bring everybody up to speed on the white paper status, I did lock down the document of with the exception for the Linux Foundation editors who want to do one last final pass through it for hopefully just minor typographical changes. But otherwise the document is done. Hopefully they'll finish that within the next day or so, and then they'll ship it off to whatever group they have to make this into a formal publication and, and clean it up for PDF printing and that kind of stuff. All right. Okay, so now, Sorry, Aaron. Uh, let's go back to the open eventing and, and discussion there. So, so go ahead and raise the question then again. Well, so the question is really about um, like if somebody hears like, oh wow, this is an exciting thing happening around cloud events, and they, um, you know, I, I apologize for the Google search um, on behalf of my company, <laughs> but it, like, is that do people have? Like, you know, how would we mitigate the, uh, the, the confusion around uh, conferences or in-person events versus these um, application layer cloud native server-side events? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a good question. I, you know, I, hopefully this turns into a thing that has strong traction and we can um, really show up in the, in the initial search results and people can find us easily. Um, you know, we've discussed, you know, making promotional material uh, around this. Uh, we already have a website up for open events, but we could change that to be cloud events. Um, and it should be like the single source of truth that will hopefully rank highly in those search results. The GitHub repo as well. Um, you know, as, as long as we get traction around that, hopefully that ranks highly as well. Other than that, I, I don't know. Um, it is a concern. I'm not sure if it's a, a super big concern, but... Definitely something to be aware of. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, I have a feeling any of the names that have been proposed would probably yield a pretty big search result set. So we may be in trouble no matter what we do from that perspective. Yeah, and actually, you know, like scrolling down on the page, like the CNCF proposal, if you search for cloud events, it's on the first page, so. Yeah, I saw that too. It doesn't, that actually, I just need to look a little more. Hmm. So yeah, so maybe it's just a matter of, you know, we all start using it and then it'll show up. Yeah. yeah. And DLF and CNCF will definitely market the hell out of it once um, you come to a decision. So don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that if you type cloud events without a space in between it, then um, the CNCF GitHub repo shows up in the results. But if you put a space in it, then uh, that's, that's not the case. That's kind of cool. That's neat. Okay, so it, it sounds like either name is okay. Um, and I don't necessarily want to open the door too wide for alternatives, but it does sound like we are sort of narrowing down between open eventing and, and cloud events. Um, is that a fair assumption or is there any concern with basically voting on between those two? Yeah, just, just some initial context uh, for all the newcomers. Um, we have cloudevents.io and I think cloudevents.org that we could use. And the GitHub repo is, what was it, Doug? Is it github.com slash cloud dash events? Um, you're talking about the old, uh, cloud, no. Oh, fudge, I don't remember. If, if we were gonna go, I, I think it was 
actually without a, a hyphen. Yeah, I think it was com slash cloud events, all one word. Yeah, it's without a hyphen. I own it, so yeah, there we go. We're, we're good. Yeah, thank God for Chris's squatting abilities. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we own that, and we and, and we own cloud cloud events .io, You said right? Cloud events .io and cloud events .org. Right. Okay. So on, on open events, we own open events.io and um, actually we do have github.com slash open hyphen events. Uh, however, github.com slash open events, all one word is pertaining to some other effort. Right. So, <clears throat> so, so I think my, my only ask from last time was that, <clears throat> that we would ideally have um, the same name for the website URL as well as for the GitHub repo, ideally. Um, and that's probably, you know, that's in part what's causing us to question this today is that today it's open events that IO, um, open events for the GitHub repo is already taken. Um, did, did we check on the GitHub repo for open eventing? Open. Oh, oh, we, well, we own open event thing, don't we? Um, yeah, we're using that, it right, right yeah, now. Yeah, that, that, right, that's our current one, right, yeah. yeah. And, and so, so, Lee, I actually share your, your concern. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm leaning more towards cloud events, because we can be consistent over there. I think if we go with open event thing, there are some people who would like to have the spec still be called open events, and I think that confusion is going to lead to some problems for us. There is an, also another project which is open messaging, I think, you are probably familiar with that since you are on it. So I think with that perspective, cloud events sounds uh, like differentiation. Sorry, I didn't hear the beginning of that. There's another product of open messaging. Uh, then open events could sound like a, an addition to that instead of something different. Yeah, you know, I, right. I think that could go, that's a good point. It probably could go either way. Either it could feel like it's of the same genre of effort or it could be confused between the two. And, and I'll add that there is another effort around open metrics, which we briefly discussed on this call before, uh, which is a, a distinct effort, but falls into that same genre of open something. The other point that was raised on the last call from Baram from Microsoft was that he was a bit concerned that cloud events would be perceived as kind of limiting the use cases when this topic is actually very broad uh, and not exactly cloud specific. Um, so just reiterating that point as we, to factor in as we, uh, as we vote on this. Right. Um, and, and real quick, uh, Sarah asks a question on the Google doc, uh, who is we? Because uh, we wrote like, or we said we have cloudevents.io, cloudevents.org. And since we have um, Chris on the call right now, I'd actually like to, to ask Chris this question. Um, you know, we're, we're, it looks like we're incubating this, this effort inside the CNCF or just doing it with close yep. supervision from the CNCF. We have these assets. Um, where do these go? So, you know, my, uh, my assumption is this would be done under the auspices of the working group uh, with the intention of bringing it to the TOC to make a formal project proposal. Uh, since it's under the operation of the working group, I'm fine having the CNCF hold the assets, including the uh, GitHub domain uh, and, and so on um, in, in the short term. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay. So we, we, you would just, we would do the domain transfer dance when you're ready um, and all that jazz if, if you decide on cloud events. Sounds good. And Austin, you actually technically own the .io and .org, right, for cloud events? Yep. That's what I thought. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we can answer Sarah directly. Okay. Okay, so. Um, so, basically, so just to clarify for the yeah. notes, Austin, you have that, but would intend to transfer it to CNCF, right? Absolutely. So whenever, yeah, I just, we just need some clarification on who to transfer it to. Now it sounds like uh, Chris you know, transferred over to Chris, and as soon as we settle on the name, I'll, I'll take care of that right away. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow up over email. It's fairly simple. I'll just hook you up with our IT folks to do it. 
And before I forget, because I will forget if I don't say it now, Sarah, thank you very much for taking notes. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, so moving forward, since we don't have a formal governance process in place for voting and stuff like that, let me ask this question. Um, does anybody have any objection to going with cloud events? Because based upon what I'm hearing so far, I do think there is a slight preference for cloud events. So, so that's my preference. I do think that it would be a good idea to address this um, alternate use case concern because I think that um, I'm definitely seeing that there's uh, people have like on-prem use cases. Um, from my perspective, that doesn't present a problem with calling them cloud events. Like, you know, JavaScript was not actually related to Java at all. It had <laughs> yeah. to be calling things because Java was a cool new language in the 90s. Um, and, you know, a bunch of us thought that was pretty weird, but, you know, whatever. It didn't actually present a problem. So, um, so I think that cloud conveys like a future forward looking and a, if you use these cloud events, you might be on prem, but then you could later connect to the cloud. And, um, like personally, I think that is a plus, not a minus. Okay. So if you have any objection to going with cloud events or yeah, let me just stop there. If you have any objection to going with going to cloud events, speak up now. Otherwise that is going to be the general. That's going to be the uh, decision by, what's the word I'm looking for? Unanimous consent. Consensus. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of the Robert's rule of order kind of thing, right? Anyway, <laughs> um, so speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. I don't, I don't, I'll add this, that I don't object. I do think that open events is, or open eventing is more inclusive. Um, I haven't heard, well, I've heard some, um, some things taking away, detracting from cloud events. I haven't heard anything detracting from open eventing. The open events has, whatever momentum this effort has today is, is attributed to open events. Um, and not, not something, and not cloud events. Um, how much momentum that is, is, is the question. But, so are there any, what are the detractions from um, open eventing? I'll time in again. Um, just, you know, this is just my personal opinion. Like, I, I don't think it says anything. Um, it's just, and open events could be used in a proprietary situation. Um, it's just a, span, it's a specification um, for, for interoperability. And, um, and so, like, there's been already confusion between all the different things that call messages events. And, um, I think coming up with a, a different, a name that, you know, like, I don't know, it also is meaningless. For me, it's something, it feels like something that is different enough that we could attach meaning to it. Whereas open events feels like it's too easy for lots of different things that people call, like messaging things, who want to attach themselves to open events and generate confusion. But that's not a huge thing I wouldn't like hate either one. I mean, you know, I just lean slightly towards the thought of it. Anybody else want to comment on Lee's question? Yeah, I agree. I think it's too ambiguous. I think okay. that too many things attach open at the front. Cloud is still kind of that realm, but at least it takes a stand that we're in the cloud realm <laughs> and leaves us room beyond just naming after something functional to, to expand into. All right. Thank you, Matt. Any other comments? I'm, I'm leaning towards cloud events. Um, I think it's, it feels a little bit more specific, which will actually be helpful. Uh, I love the story of cloud events, you know, coming out of the CNCF. I think that's, that's nice. Otherwise, I think it's just traction. That's going to make all the difference. I mean, when you, when you think of the word, the Beatles, you know, what comes to mind, um, not not really an insect it's mostly the band which has nothing to do with that word but um uh anyway so yeah i, I think cloud events is is fine in my opinion okay so lee were you just uh asking the question in general or are you actually objecting uh, i think i was just doing diligence just, okay. to, just to make sure okay that's fine 
Okay. Yeah, actually, the last thing that Austin had said about um, the scenes, the first word in the CNCF being cloud, and this being cloud, that, that, that resonates. Yeah. Okay. So I think this will, this will put a smile on Dan Kahn's face. <laughs> and that's all that matters, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, too, hopefully. All right, so one last chance. Any objections with going with cloud events? All right, we are done. Excellent, thank you guys very much. Big decision made. All right, so next on the agenda is governance. Um, Mark, would you like to talk to the changes that you recently made? I believe the changes are all in this voting section, the first couple of bullets. Maybe you could talk to the changes you made? Sure. The, the issue that we were curious about after reading this was that there's, we didn't want to have any one com company having a lot of people show up just for the voting and then be able to, to rig the, the, the voting. And so we decided that we wanted to have uh, one vote per company and then have a way to be able to track that in uh, the, the spreadsheet in order to say, all right, who can actually vote on these things and how do we uh, uh, keep track of, you know, who's been actually attending and participating in the open eventing. So the, the thought here is that, again, one vote per company, we will allow the, the company to assign a primary uh, voter and then a, uh, you know, because people need to take a break or have other meetings, we would allow them to have a secondary representative in order if they couldn't make it for any of the, the, the voting that was occurring. So that was the, the uh, question at hand from last time. And we proposed some, some additional wording into the voting structure of the spec or of the governance in order to take that into account. So I, you know, I'd love to, to open that up for people to uh, comment on it. Yeah, so I think the basic idea here is that for companies, you can have a primary and then an alternate who has to be designated basically in advance. And then either one of those two people uh, are having their presence on, on the three out of four calls gives that company voting rights. With the primary person getting obviously the, you know, the, the right to vote. And if they're not there, then the alternate steps up to it. What do people think about that? Um. I, I mean, I think that that generally is a good idea. I think we also want to, like, I would like to see, and we talked about a while ago when we were working on the like, paper of like wanting to have, or maybe it was in some con serverless working group conversation, um, wanting to have people who were using the events, right? Like the, the application developers represented or people who were like the ecosystem, right? So a lot of the, the you know, the, the interest around creating specifications and creating interop is, is to create an ecosystem of tools as well as fostering, you know, accelerating the adoption of these cloud native technologies. And so, um, so I want to make sure that we include those folks, um, yet we also don't invite a lot of looky-loos who are not actually doing any work with these technologies yet want to talk a lot. So, um, so, so I don't know how to balance that, but it would be great to have some kind of like that, that attendance at meetings is not the only indicator that somebody's involved. I'd like to see like some weight to people who are actively working on code that implements um, this uh, specification or actively contributing use cases or, you know, indicating that they will adopt um, this technology or something, something. So is I, I, I don't believe that we were trying to prohibit people from, from participating based off of this, but when we were wanting to make decisions on, in voting, that, that's, that's what we were focused on with, with respect to only having one vote per company. But in terms of participating in the calls or, or anything else, we, we want that to be wide open. Yeah, yes, I, I was just raising the like, so this is the, the, the governance here 
So I guess the question I have, maybe this is, um, I did miss a few meetings, like what does it mean to be a working group member? So keep in mind, this is strictly about if on the rare occasion we have to actually take a vote because we just cannot come to a consensus, how are we going to do the voting? Right. So this is my question, naively. What, what is a, a working group member? Like, is this, are we just saying that the working group is whoever shows up? Basically, but... The definition that I missed I, a working group member. I would say a working group member is anyone that shows up and participates in, in the calls. And I guess I was saying that I would like to see people have more participation than showing up in the calls in some way. If you can, so, so I think what you're asking for is interesting. Um, it's going to be a challenge though to actually put that into very formalized language though. Um, if, if you want to take the action item to come up with some language to, to augment this proposal, I think that'd be great. Um, but I think what you're asking for is, is a really difficult thing. I think I've, I have a bunch of ideas. I'll, I'll propose something. I'll take okay. that. Now, is, is, the, is, that, is, is your ask there something that you would like to block the adoption of this pull request? Or can we do the pull request or move the pull request forward and then augment this later once we discuss your, your, alternate, your, your additional text? I have no context for why we why voting is a priority now and how the governance models work. So, like I said, I, I'm hoping we don't really take votes very often. However, um, if we do decide to go with a um, down the path of allowing people to vote and it is based upon attendance in the meetings, then people need to understand that as soon as possible because the current thing that we're shooting for is three out of the last four meetings, which means people need to know whether they have to show up, otherwise they're gonna lose voting rights, right? So we gotta kind of know, or let people know at least a couple weeks in advance. So, so my, so my question is, stuff. I, think, I, I think that one thing is having a document. I mean, if there is any move towards a governance model, it should be written down someplace. <laughs> so when people come, they know, you know what they're getting out of the meeting and what they need to do to have their vote count or whatever. So are we, I know that you, Doug, you've taken a lot on yourself. Were you moving in that direction to create a document, a governance document? Well, that's what this is. It is a governance document. Basically, okay. exactly what you said, Matt. It's so that people understand the rules and hopefully we never have to, you know, get that formalized. But if, if you know, things get contentious, you have to have the rules that everybody understands that going into it. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think having... Oh, like, so, like, yeah, coming up on this meeting, I, I wasn't... I didn't know where to find the agenda... And um, like, you know, it, it was, it was, it's not very discoverable at the moment. So I, I think having stuff written down is great. Um, and, uh, and, and likewise, if we're gonna like make up, you know. So yeah, I mean, does everybody feel like at this meeting, like we're well represented of whatever we think this working group is enough that we would, should accept a governance model? I think there was someone else trying to say something in there as well. Was that William? Yes, yes. I was just going to make a comment that uh, we have been discussing this, I think, for the last two or three meetings, at least the, the overall idea of the governance and, and this particular pull request, I think it's been there for a while as well. I think that's pretty much what you're saying, that attendance is, I think, required to evaluate this. And, and, and that's why I think, at least from my, from my perspective, this is good. And if we need to change, it's fine. We just submit the PR and change it right later. But I'm from, from my perspective, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, and this looks like a good model to start with. Yeah, yeah this is I guess my confusion was that this is being checked into GitHub as part of open eventing. So, so this, should this document reside someplace more at the CNCF level? Well, this is for what, it, it's for this, this group, right? It's for the, it's the governance it's, of, it's our, of our, our work around like, the specification. But, but in terms of the work group, the work group scope will go beyond open eventing. So shouldn't the document live at a higher order place? No. The, I, so my understanding is that this governance is just governs our work on this particular specification. If people propose additional work items like additional specs or libraries or tools that aren't technically under the scope of this spec, then they're going to have their own governance model. That's, been, that's been my assumption anyway. Gonna just decide on a governance model and save everybody else some time. But uh, I don't feel strongly. 
I, I, you cut out a little there. Can you repeat that? So yeah, or we could decide that this is the governance model of the serverless working group and any project that we foster and save ourselves some time later. We, we could. I mean, we could definitely raise this up at some point, but to be honest, I'd like to try to tackle one hurdle at a time. Because <laughs> um, I think that's a broader issue, because I'm not sure everybody would be ready to necessarily say, for everything we ever possibly produce on this work group, here's the, here's the working model we're going to, or here's the governance model we're going to have. That may be what we end up with, but we haven't talked about that up until now. Up until now, the discussion has been, for the work on the specification, does this governance model fit? And if we want to broaden the scope, then I'd rather address that as, as a separate issue with a separate discussion. Well, I think it has to be had sooner or later because I mean, you already had on the agenda today talk about what it means to be a member of the work group and you know, you have to be prepared for, for larger scope. I think we've already discussed larger scope, so. Well, I'm not sure that's true. We talked about possibly doing other things, but we haven't decided to do anything else yet, so. We talked about interoperability and being inclusive of people who are not in the work group and things like that, so. So I'm trying to struggle here on whether the, 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 the issues that are being raised are, are, the, are significant enough to block trying to move forward with this PR, or do people want to make concrete suggestions to this PR before we consider adopting it? I guess, what's, what, why, why is there a problem saying that that's the governance model for the work group? Why does it have to be associated with just a single spec and be done with it? I mean, if everyone's in agreement, why don't I make it the general and then work, work it from the other side? If, if there are specific things about this spec or a certain scope, then they have to limit the, the general governance model based upon that work effort. Why not, why not, why not bite the bullet now? <laughs> so the, the one I want to say there is, the only reason we haven't talked about it is because we just haven't talked about it. It's always been talked about in the scope of the spec, but I'll ask the question. What do people think about making this the governance for the entire work group itself? I think that the working group is, we've discussed in the past about breaking out into smaller um, working teams focused on um, specific things. The first one to come up is, is events. There are other backlog subtracts to potentially crop up in parallel. Like it's um, somewhat lower risk to do this, to accept a, a governance model for I guess I would refer to this as a subtract, but right now it's the single track that we have um, to try that out. And there's nothing preventing us from um, seeing that this works, uh, augmenting it if need be over time, and just reusing that model elsewhere. Like to to make the decision now is a is a bigger one for the entire work group to um, test it out on on cloud events um, is a smaller um, risk and. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, this governance model is not like any governance model I've seen at like half a dozen other standards orgs. So I don't know why it would be contentious to adopt it for the work group and just make it, have it be a blanket. <laughs> so. Anybody else want to comment on this? Um, I, I don't have a, a super strong preference. I, I feel like we can update this as we move along and face, face new problems. Um, I, I definitely empathize with some points that Sarah raised. Uh, you know, we have openevents.io, there's a newsletter on there, and there's, you know, well over 100 people who've signed up, and they're coming from so many different walks of life or industries. Uh, this, you know, this events topic is, is broader than serverless, and we're going to get a lot of different types of people in here. We want to make sure that we're, we're inclusive of all those types of people, um, because this has broad ability to appeal to a lot of use cases. Um, but also we have, you know, we hone in on the people who are focused on this full time. So just you know, anything that's inclusive that uh, can bring a lot of people under this tent, uh, but help us operate efficiently. Uh, sounds great to me. Other than that, you know, if this is the working group governance, uh, that's fine with me. If this is just open events governance. That's fine with me for now. Um, and I'd be interested in seeing some other proposals uh, later on how we could just uh, improve upon this. Okay. Any other comments? I echo asking opinion. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so I think there are two different things here. One is whether this PR can move forward or whether 
we want to make additional edits to it. Um, and I'll, I'll talk, and then the second point is the, its scope. So let's, let's do these one at a time. Relative to this PR, um, how do people feel about it? Do we want to move forward as is and look to possibly merge it with the, with the understanding that people can submit PRs to augment it later? Because I, as I think it was William mentioned earlier, we, this has been discussed several weeks now, and we kind of, it'd be nice if we can get this behind us. Okay, is there any objection to adopting the PR as it currently stands? Hopefully everybody read it all before. The annoying new stuff is this first, I think like through the three or four bullets under voting. I have a slight issue with the three out of four meetings. Okay. You, you count each individual uh, separately, right? Let's say that one more time. You count each individual from the company separately. So it's for each one of those, it's three out of four? No, it, it's if, if the primary or alternate attends three out of four. So let's assume the primary attended two and the secondary attended two. Does it count three out of four? Yes, that's actually four out of four, yes. Yeah, okay. So it's not very clear from this uh, paragraph. Uh, let's, let's see. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -bum. Either. Uh, no, no, either. Having any of their assigned representatives attend three out of four. And it could be either the primary or the secondary. Correct. That's why, that's why we specifically said assigned representatives. And You're the American person, so if you think it's, it's accurate enough, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. I mean, obviously, we could take additional PRs later to, to tweak the wording if it is unclear. I think at this point, it's more about getting the, the general agreement in place or the, the high-level concept in place. We can wordsmith later if we need to. Okay. So I'll ask again, is there any objection to adopting this? I'm fine with it, Doug. Uh, with the understanding that we can modify this later to uh, address issues as they arise. Yep, that's true about just about everything. Yep. <laughs> is there a different voting pattern for a modifier or is it the same voting pattern? It's votes or votes. Yeah, one of the things we may want to update later or to be more clear about is when it is that someone fall, then, a, then someone who has voting privileges falls out of privilege. I think right now it's implied that um, that would be after missing three meetings in a row or something like that. Um, probably. No, two, two meetings? I don't know. I can't do math right now. <laughs> if, if they don't do three out of four, three out of the last four, then they vote out, then they fall out of voting rights. That's right. Do we, do we reference the calendar where, by which meetings are tracked? I mean, because there are meetings get canceled or meetings get... For holiday purposes. We will, we will keep track of it and basically right now the spreadsheet and or we know we have some other mechanism we'll, we'll switch over to that but. Do we, do we link to that spreadsheet and our calendar? Yeah in fact it's actually right here. Just need to take into account that uh, our holidays uh, the Jewish ones are on a different date on, than the American ones. Understood we, we may need to tweak that friendly. Yeah. Count, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've heard, I think if I remember correctly, um, in other standards bodies, I've heard of people uh, formally asking, I can't remember what the right word is, to go on the hiatus or something like that. Oh, leave of absence. Really That's leave a sabbatical. Of, leave, of, leave, of, leave of absence in writing to the chair. Yeah, so and maybe we can look at it. Right. And then the, 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 the group has to approve the leave of absence by vote. Right, so I think, I think there are mechanisms that we can add to, to cover that if necessary. And I think those kind of changes would be very welcome. Okay. Okay, again, I'd rather not rattle too much unless there's major objections. So again, any objections to adopting this? All right, cool, we'll make that so. Thank you guys very much. Uh, moving on to the PRs. Austin, I believe PR number four is yours if you'd like to talk to it. I think you may have made some changes recently. Yes, um, this you know we we've been discussing laying out a roadmap um, 
for this effort. And it's a very simple roadmap right now. I did an initial draft before the last meeting. I did some very small revisions uh, before this meeting, and those revisions were really just to kind of move a bit faster. Because I think we could, um, given all the people who are involved in this effort, do more things uh, concurrently. Um, but essentially, <clears throat> if you want to go through it real quick, uh, in January, we're you know establishing governance contributing guidelines uh, and initial stakeholders. Uh, we're also drafting you know, educational materials on how to become a stakeholder, how to become involved, um, and educational materials on use cases, and hopefully using those use cases to help hone in our focus on, um, on what the scope is, the initial scope of this effort. Uh, we're iterating on the first version of the specification. Uh, all this is happening in January. Uh, in February, we're going to continue to iterate on the first version of the specification, continue to draft educational materials on use cases, and start to investigate um, collaborating, uh, investigate types of uh, supporting tools uh, necessary to help people use uh, the specification more easily and integrate it with uh, the ecosystem. Um, and hopefully by the end of February, given that we've, we've already kind of established some uh, or, or a lot of the uh, this common uh, uh, event format. Uh, we could finalize the initial version by the end of February. Um, that allows us to really kind of go full steam ahead in March on authoring libraries and supporting tools to actually enable people to get hands on with the specification and start using it um, in their applications and give us feedback uh, and all that. So. Uh, in March, hopefully, we could be drafting documentation and user guides as well and start, you know, building out promotional materials for the effort, websites, you know, logos, anything. Um, April, continuing to collaborate on libraries and supporting tools to use, to, to use the specification, um, continue to build out promotional materials. And in May, this is kind of the, the big event that is driving a lot of this, and that is Cloud Native Con Europe happens in the beginning of May, um, and it would be great if you know, we could announce this and talk about it at length at Cloud Native Con Europe, uh, talk about our progress. Um, you know, who knows, maybe we can even get this thing accepted uh, into the CNCF uh, before then. So, um, but that's it uh, at, a, at a very high level. Um, we continue to work on this and refine this roadmap. Uh, honestly, I think we can move a bit faster than, um, than what this lists, but Anyway, this is just a start at the roadmap. Uh, let us know if anyone has any thoughts or feedback. Okay. Any comments or questions? Uh, related to this roadmap, so <clears throat> I put on the agenda too. <clears throat> sorry, I've got a lightning talk on what we're doing here in the CNCF working group at, uh, at ServiceConf in February. So uh, we can add a bullet here if we want to announce anything specific besides just inviting people to participate. I don't know, Austin, if there's anything you suggest, maybe. Yes, the, the date of that of serverless comp, that's, is that early February? Or February 15th. Mid-February, okay. Yeah, I think, let's see, it's like a month from now. Uh, honestly, I think we can make a lot of progress, and, um, you know, you should have some interesting stuff to talk about. I think we could, you know, we'll move the website over. Uh, you know, I think one of my biggest focuses personally or something I, I think is hugely important is just building traction around this effort. And if you're going to be able to talk about this, then let's make sure that everything is very clear on kind of like what the story is behind this, how you could become involved and where you go to look um, and actually be involved. So, you know, I'd say that's kind of first priority, I think. Um, other than that, you know, I think we'll, you know, we already have a version of the specification. We'll continue to iterate on it. Um, and you could talk a bit uh, about that as well, as well as the use cases. So rather than having people submit pull requests later on for every single conference that comes up, I'm wondering whether, obviously, um, putting the ones that are specific to the CNCF are kind of important, so I, that, those are okay being in here, but I'm wondering whether we should just create a wiki page, that way you don't have to go through the PR process to list out all the possible events that we should be talking about this at, just to speed things along. Yeah, so there's a wiki right associated with each GitHub repo. I mean, right. that's one way to kind of use as a staging area for stuff that doesn't go through the formal approval process of PRs. Yeah, just I just yeah, I don't have to do a PR every single time a new conference pops up because there's a new conference every week. It feels like so. I'm a fan of that. Anything we could do to coordinate promotional efforts, speaking about this, um, 
is all supports uh, one of the big priorities in my mind, and that's kind of building building traction around this. So uh, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. Um, overall, um, Austin, I, I like the, the what you put in here. My only request before we look at merging the PR is that you address the comments that are in there. I, I, I get a lot antsy about PRs getting merged without with comments that have yet to be even commented on. Even if it's I don't like your comment, go away. <laughs> I don't know if I'll handle it that way, but I will address. I, I will address the comments. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. It just, I just, I just feel uneasy about unanswered comments. So, uh, this Great. is uh, David Baldwin. Quick question: When is the uh, the date for you guys to be planning on doing the merge? I just want to make sure I get my comments in before you guys close it off. I mean, this PR itself. Yeah. Right. Um, if if all the comments were 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 addressed already, I would ask to. To, to merge it right now, but because they're outstanding ones, it won't happen until next week at the soonest. Got it, got it, cool, thank you. Yeah, and that, that, that's, you know, that's the pattern I'm trying to go to, is to try to put PRs on our agenda that seem to have general consensus, all comments have been addressed, and I feel like they're ready to merge, because I don't want to do too much discussion in this call if we can avoid it, and let people do offline discussions, because I think that's more productive. Okay, any other comments or questions on this one then? Okay, we have seven minutes left. Um, there is another PR, this one, which I think all the comments were addressed, so maybe this one could go fairly quickly. Um, I apologize, I don't recognize yeah. the GitHub handle. Who's this? Yeah, I can't. I'm Yep. Would you like to talk to this one? It's fairly straightforward. Uh, well, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. Just uh, the original paragraph seemed a bit ambiguous to me, so just uh, rewrote it. And We'll be take a look. Uh, not, nothing changed really, as in, in terms of the meaning that it conveys. Yeah, I think it's it's more of a uh, syntactical change. It's not a semantic change, correct? Yep. Yep. And I will point out that there is one. I think we have our very first RFC twenty one nineteen keyword in there. May. Woohoo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that's an important thing. So make sure because that's normative. Yep. So I'll give people a chance to, to look this over, um, but it seemed fairly straightforward. I was hoping we might be able to close out this one today. Any questions or comments on this one? All right, not hearing any. Is there any objection to unanimous consent on agreeing to this PR being merged? All right, done. Thank you guys very much. Next on the agenda. Um, hey, 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 Doug. Oh, hey, yes. I, um, just add in a comment uh, real quick, kind of related to that, uh, that last agenda item. Uh, you know, uh, a few stakeholders before joining the serverless working group put together the first version of the, um, of the specification that's currently in the GitHub repo. Uh, well, when we had those meetings to talk about that, we never got into names, actually, what we'd have start naming things. Um, we kind of addressed it a little bit, but we really just focused on um, kind of the use cases and, and uh, the things that needed to be in this common definition of events, but like what property, what, what names are used, what, what the names of the properties are. Um, we actually deferred that whole conversation. So I'm just... I'm making this explicit because if anyone's looking to get involved and they think that there could be improvements made on the names that we're using and the vocabulary that we're using within this um, to help make this effort easier to understand, more accessible, then that's a clear, a clear place to, uh, to contribute. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'd, I'd actually like to broaden it a little wider and say that in my opinion, I, technically the entire spec is open for a PR. So anything you you want to see changed, go ahead and try to PR it, and then we can discuss it. Yep. All right. Cool. Thank you, Austin. Um, four minutes left, Austin. You maybe you could just quickly introduce this one. I don't think we're going to have time to approve it because it just was added a few hours ago. Maybe you could quickly talk to it. Sure. Yes. Um, so part of this is uh, this effort. Um, to kind of build traction, make sure everyone, everyone understands what we're doing and why is listing out some clear use cases uh, as to what you can do with this. Um, I've started drafting up um, a series of use cases. This isn't finished by any means, um, but it's a, it's a start. 
So if anyone has any comments, thoughts, uh, please add them into this PR. Initially, I, I did try to focus, given this is the serverless working group, and also given the fact that events is broader than, than serverless, uh, I did try and shape the initial use cases around kind of more serverless serverless use cases. So there's um, that's something that I kept in mind when I started drafting these out. So there's stuff in there about enabling or making serverless architectures easier to create, um, making functions as a service more portable. Um, so that's just, you know, that's the reason why some of those use cases are, are at the top. Um, we could discuss whether or not this is the best approach, but, you know, given this is the serverless working group and given we are, we all have uh, likely a strong serverless bias, I thought I'd, I'd start with those. Any comments? As I said, I don't want to necessarily merge this right now because it just was added a few hours ago. People haven't had a chance to read it. But it seemed fairly straightforward to me. I'm going to continue adding to this and, you know, we could, we could keep discussing it. I think this is uh, kind of a, more of a longer term effort, but um, uh, an essential part of, of why we're doing this and, and what you can do with it. Yeah. Okay. With that, I think we're basically at the end of the agenda, but before people drop, um, I want to make sure we go back to the roll call. John Mitchell, are you on? Yep. And Curtis from Red Hat, I'm, I'm sorry, Jim Curtis from Red Hat? Jim? What about, yep. is that Jim? Okay, what about David Lyle from Intel? Okay. Uh, is there anybody else on the call who does not have an asterisk next to their name in the attendee this list? Is, this is David. I'm on. Hey, David. Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is there anybody on the call who does not have an asterisk next to their name who would like to be recorded for attendance? Uh, uh, David Baldwin, uh, Splunk. Okay. Hold on. Anybody else? You said it was Splunk, right? Yes. Excellent. Anybody else? All right. This is Travis Reader from Oracle. Oh. What's your last name, Travis? Reader, R-E-E-D-E-R. Thank you. OK. And we'll talk, uh, I'll probably reach out offline to people to find out who people want as their primary versus alternate, if it's not obvious to me. Or actually, I should probably send out a note just to confirm anyway. All right. Uh, and, and Doug, one quick comment on this. Um, I think that some of some other people who were involved initially with this effort got a bit confused by the meeting cadence uh, of this call. Um, so I understand we're trying to you know, track um, attendance right now, but I think we haven't set up, we haven't communicated fairly like how, how these meetings operate, or at least I haven't to some of the initial stakeholders. So I just want to call that out as we, as we start doing this. So uh, for example, Sarah um, over at Google, super excited to have her continued support and involvement in this effort. Uh, Google was one of the first companies to really instigate this whole effort. Uh, it was under Sarah's leadership and um, her team. And, you know, this is, even though this is the first um, service working group, meeting that she's attended, you know, her team was heavily involved in the early days. Same goes with uh, Microsoft and, and even Amazon. Uh, I don't think Microsoft was aware that this was happening today. Um, and Amazon, I just got to check in and see, um, see if they want to continue to participate. Yeah, no, please do reach out to those folks and let them know that we do meet every week. And like I said, hopefully we won't have to take votes very often. So attendance tracking it won't be critical, but you never know what might happen. So they definitely want to try to attend. Yep, I'm, I'm all for this um, basic governance model right now. I agree um, it's the right way to do things uh, for now. Uh, I just want to call out that um, there's a bit of confusion that uh, is setting us up for a, a slightly rough start, but that'll get, that'll get fixed. Yep, luckily we don't have too many PRs to review yet, so we're, we're okay. <laughs> all right, cool. And I, with that, I believe we're over time. I apologize for going over one minute. Thank you guys very much, and we'll talk next week. Have a good day, everybody. Cool, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Right. Cheers. Thanks, bye. Thanks, Doug. Yep. Bye. Bye.